All right, oh. Ohio Cast Podcast. <laughs> we have a special. Uh, we got a, a, a real big live duel coming up. We got uh, assistant coach Brian Whitner for the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. Class 03. Uh, 04. 04. Class 04. 04 Yellow yeah. Jacket 04. Yep. And then we have head coach Scotty Burnett for the Perrysburg Yellow Jackets. Welcome, guys. How you doing? Hi. <laughs> Good, man. How you doing? <laughs> Good. Okay. So I just got done. Um doing a quick preview with the coaches well just well, it was just one coach from um um uh Dundee Michigan you guys pick take on the Dundee Vikings on Thursday 6 p.m at Perrysburg first things first um what is your national rank and what is their national rank hey Whit, you probably know him I don't know him yeah uh, when I so when I say something like that I'm not talking to you <laughs> what uh, happened? When I ask an analytical question that has something to do with numbers or logistics, <laughs> I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to Wit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rain Man. Uh, so we're we're uh, we're 23rd. They're 43rd. So okay, so they're, you're 23rd. They're 43rd. Um, they have co-head coaches Garrett Stevens, Nate Hall. They replaced legendary um, coach Tim Roberts. Correct. Yeah, Tim Roberts. Awesome dude. Good dude. And uh, they have won the last, I want to say, seven state championships in um, Michigan. Guys, I just got to point some things out about the state of Michigan that are wacky. I got to get it off my chest before we go any further. Are you ready for the? Are you ready for what I'm about to tell you? Can't wait. Okay. First thing. Michigan does state dual championships and individual championships, like they coincide and like kind of straddle each other. Does that make sense? Right. Did you know that? Yeah. Wait, did you know? Yeah. They like don't keep an individual score or something, right? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. To my next point. When they wrestle their state tournament for individual championships, they do not keep a team score to which I pointed out <clears throat> to coach um, Garrett Stevens. Every level that you go to, the next level, Division One NCA, Two NCA, Three NCA, NAIA, JUCO, at the end of the season, all five of those levels, what do they do at their end of the season tournament? <laughs> what do they do? Yeah, they have they have individual scores and team championships. Correct, correct. An individual can can score their own team score if it's just one person on a team, and an individual can you know, and then you got ten guys and. They and they think that they think that's normal that they don't keep a team score. Next thing, are you guys ready for this one? Shoot it. Michigan wrestles a Friday Saturday state tournament. They weigh in Thursday night. Oh, one way in. One it's way. The in. only way in. <laughs> wow, that's, that's weird. <laughs> it's amazing. Crazy. If you're a gigantic dude who cuts a bunch of weight, you're gonna be yeah, that's, forty I, pounds I, I bigger didn't... than your guy. I didn't know that they just had one way in. That's super interesting. Have you ever? I was like, dude, what is it? The tournament of champions? Some bit, what is it? The <laughs> tournament? What's happening? Do you guys yeah, ever heard of that? Have you no. ever heard of that? No, I knew they did like the home way ins for like their do like everything in the season or a lot of their dual meets for like home way ins, but I didn't I didn't know that. So they'll be like, yeah, I got a call in the way in that Jimmy. He he's a big one hundred six. He he made it one hundred five point nine, and the dude yeah. shows up and he weighs one hundred thirty five pounds. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> uh, hey, hold on! I forgot to send my weighing sheet in. I gotta send, <laughs> gotta send it in. <laughs> Drop it in the mail, <laughs> dude. No, that's super, me, that's super. Wild. I mean, but but that's not. That's just how their their rules are. You know, that's how it is. It's like. You know, well, I, mean? I always thought I always thought the Ohio wayouts were insane, right? Because the dudes are massive the next day, right? Like if you look at the Graham guys or the St. Ed's guys who, you know, that they're cutting, they're cutting D1 college weight, right? They're they're pulling 20, some of them 20, 20, 20, 15, 20 pounds a week, right? And then they if they can get through that semifinal and get into the state final and they it, the way out's essential, right? And they're massive. You guys are a D1 program. You get what I'm talking about. You got guys who've cut weight hard all year, and they make that last way out, and then they're they're gold for the state final, right? Yeah, we don't 
I mean, our, we've had kids cut, but we don't traditionally, our kids aren't super massive for their weight classes. But yeah, obviously, when you make a way out, um, and if you're, especially if you're doing it right, man, you have such an advantage when you're, you know what I mean? By the end of the year, if you're healthy and you're able to acclimate, you know, and, and uh, hydrate up and be fresh, man, you're going to be tough to beat if you got size, you know, to go along with good technique and grit and fight, stuff like that. Coach Whitner, we don't do an event like that, do we? We don't do a Thursday night, a one way in and two days of wrestling. We don't do that at all in Ohio for anything, right? I don't think so. I mean, I've never even heard of it. No, there's no, uh, pretty much the only time there's a night before weigh ins, like second day of a tournament. Yeah, I mean, so I don't, second day of tournament, state tournament, but yeah, nothing the day before. Okay, so I know that Coach Whitner does the scheduling, a lot of the scheduling and logistics. Um, <clears throat> Coach Whitner, did you approach Dundee for this duel? Scotty, did you approach? How did it come to be that you put a duel at the beginning of your 50 plus team tournament? That's was 60 plus 60 plus teams now, right? Um, it's not like 50, right at like 51, 50. I mean, 51, I think is what it is. So, okay, yeah. but what does that come about? I think, it's, I think it's the biggest we've had, right? With yeah, yeah, I think uh, la so last year was like year number 50, and the goal was to get 50 teams. Um, so we got, I think we were right there last year, and then we had just on the just by growing our tournament, like the I think the competition's gotten better every year. It's uh, people are starting to reach out to us uh they want to come so it's it's been really good the, the depth of the tournaments getting to where kind of what Scotty and I envisioned what we could have at our in our home gym so it's been really cool to see it grow especially within the last 5 years so why why stack um a top 50 team in a dual meet on the Thursday before the Friday Saturday of your own 50 plus team tournament <laughs> um oh. I, honestly it was like we got to we, we try to host a dual meet the night before so we can get set up, you know, get the setup going a little, get the gym reserved for us. And then um, we were just having a hard time getting a, a team to come just in our, around the area, just cause um, I don't know, it's, it's hard to get some teams to come in and want to duel us cause we're pretty good. And, you know, and then Scotty reached out to the guys at Dundee and it made it happen. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, Zeb, I'm super lucky, and I got a lot of smart guys and coaches that are um, constantly thinking about uh, bettering our brand. And when we were in the jam with no match, you know, our dudes were like, dude, what about Dundee? And we were like, whoa, yeah. So then they, they reached out, and they were down to come. They're really good, man. We got, you know um, – and through the club over the years, you know, just, you know, I, I built a really good rapport with uh, Tim and then just training some of their kids that, that supplement training and come to BTW stuff and come and they would work out with our kids, our Perrysburg kids over the years. We just built a really good rapport with them. And, uh, you know, the, the, you know, the, 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 the new coaches, they're young dudes and they're motivated and they're, 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 they're also thinking outside the box and they were super down to coming down and um, hook it up with us. And, and uh, it's going to be a really good opportunity for um, not just our kids, but their kids. Obviously we have a lot of really good indiv individual matchups that could take place in the duel and it can be a really competitive match. So it's, uh, it's really, really cool. And it's totally out of um, just respect for those guys and that tradition of that program. And, um, just knowing those kids and those coaches and yeah, we're grateful that they're um, that they want to come down and hook up and wrestle our kids and be in front of our people and have a good time. You know, talking to them, they had a champ at 144 pounds, uh, a sophomore, a guy who was a state runner up last year who couldn't make their lineup, who, who was a state runner up last year, 144, but he was a 126 pounder went up, wins the Brexville, at 144 pounds um that's you know probably the top end um of their their weight class i mean of their team he's their best guy um you know he well, knocks they, off. Yeah, they, he, he's cosby's a he's a, he's a beast he's a hammer he's really really good blake cosby's really? only a sophomore and the week before cosby knocks off uh herring 
and he knocked off Brogan Tucker. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's a sophomore for Dundee. He wins the Brexville. He wins Crown Point. I mean, you know, they're being led by a guy like that. And then he told me they had two placers at 113 last year. They were also they had two placers at Gray's weight at 113 pounds. Your son Gray Burnett won uh Brexville. And then they had a 20 pounder who lost to Denkins in the blood round, right? Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot to no, there's a lot down the line here, man. Yeah. And they're uh they're tough. All those kids are tough. Um, they they uh yeah, we were just talking about um just their program and their kids and their culture and you know that that they those kids are all falling in line with that, you know, just those years of just basic tough wrestling, you know, that you know, Coach Roberts created and then you know, those guys are just all they're they're a lot, they're a lot like Swiderski and I mean, there, there's eight Braden Davis and Aiden Davis and gosh, I mean, there's count. I mean, they've had tons of Whitman and I mean, they've had tons of really good guys, man. Tons of good guys. And they're all just like that tough, tough country kids um, that love wrestling, that understand wrestling. Um, they're absolutely a formidable opponent. It's going to be a really, really fun match. Brian, what was the pride best matchup up and down the lineup, right? Like, obviously, Denkins beating them in the blood round. And then Denkins took third, right? Yep. Yep. What's the best matchup up and down the lineups that you can think of where you guys clashed heads with Dundee at Brexford where you hit head to head? Um, probably 120. That was a, they had two kids in the bracket. They're pretty good. They had uh, the little Haynes kid who's tough. Um, and then, so Alex beat both of them. Um, and then the kid he wrestled, the blood round, the 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 Burns kids, super good. I think that was probably the the best one that we had head to head. Um, you know, little Tackett's wrestled uh, Kochner twice in the in the bracket. Co I think Mason was fourth and Ben was fifth, and the Aiden, our starting six, won the weight. So that I mean, that should be a good should be a good match too to kick off the duel at six. And then, uh, like you mentioned, great thirteen. They had two placers in at thirteen and, and Gray. So it's I think just every match is going to be competitive. I think they're good. Like I told Scotty, 106 to 175, they're really good. Um, 126 is a big one, right? Obviously, um, you have a state champ at 126. They have a state champ at 126. Are we going to see that matchup? We didn't see it at Brexville. Um, Could we see Evans versus uh, Kloos at 126? Because I think if those guys hit and they were to wrestle, that's one of your top matchups, right? Like I – that you know yeah. that between Dankins at one twenty, and and if we could see Cluse and uh, uh, Evans hit, th that's one I want to see. Right, you got an Ohio State champ for a Michigan yeah. State champ. Will we see that match? Is that something that can happen still? Oh, I hope. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, there. That's yeah. Cole's Russell twenty six and Cluse is twenty six. Um, so yeah, I think those guys will will pair up and mix it up. That's a neat one too, because it's um, different styles, different styles. Um, you know, Cole's uh, a little bit of an, an orthodox wrestler. Um, good in various areas and, and Clues is very dynamic and tough on his feet and he can wrestle everywhere, but just, they're just a little different with how they wrestle. So that'll be a really, really cool match. Um, from a fan perspective. You know, you guys have this big dual meet and you guys bring a team like this in. Um, you, you had a, a, a common opponent. They're going to end up dueling DCC. You guys dueled DCC. DCC beat you in um, Finley, right? Was it Finley? Yeah. They beat you in Finley. Uh, and then you beat them at Brexville, right? Yeah. Michigan teams. I don't know if people know, but Perrysburg, Ohio – you're only about 15 minutes from the, the Michigan border. Is that correct? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. So do you run into a lot of Michigan teams, not just at Brexville, but in local tournaments? And do you go up and wrestle in Michigan much? Uh, we, well, we don't compete with our high school group up in Michigan. Um, but they're at, 
those Michigan schools come to like the Roughneck Duels and then like Brexville. Um, so we get to see them there. So that's yeah. that's about the, that's about the extent of it, Brian. Yeah, we got to see a lot of we get to see a lot of the, you know, traditional power programs of Michigan: Davison, Lowell, DCC, um, Dundee, and then we get to see you know uh, Hudson, Michigan, uh, always at Roughneck Duels. Uh, Richmond, Michigan has a pretty historical program. I don't know where they're at now as a program, but they're, they usually come to Frickers or whatever, Roughneck or whatever it's called nowadays. But, uh, a lot of them travel down for that. And then, um, you know, it, um, we had a team from Michigan pull out of pit saline Michigan contacted us about coming down this year, which is going to be our first Michigan team. But, um, with Ian school, Western reserve, their prep school. So Michigan's got that weird deal where they can't, deal with the prep school stuff so that i they think if the prep, if the prep okay. school comes to michigan they can wrestle them oh, yeah, that's because so, <laughs> they're gonna actually he told me dundee will do a lake highland prep okay dude dundee's gonna do with you guys lake highland prep dcc <laughs> st edward wow. it was like i don't think he said sam but it was somebody else. some yeah. other top 10 team i'm like you guys are nuts i love it um, but uh, I, I just love that they're so close to what. How far are the the is Dundee from Perrysburg? Uh, well, yeah, forty minutes, forty five minutes. Is it that far? I thought it was closer. Might, yeah, it yeah. might be thirty might be. minutes. Might be thirty. That's pretty close. Okay. Um, talk about your guys' season recap so far, Coach. Um, whether it be, let's just start out with with Iron Man. Did you start with Iron Man or did you start with the Finley duels? I can't remember. Iron Man. So you started with Iron Man. Two yeah. places at Iron Man for you? Yeah. Yep. Two placers. Uh three in the blood round. Three potential three placers. We did really good. Kids did really well. Finished tenth. Um Your highest finish 12. ever. Uh yeah, I think so. What what do you think, Wit? Is that our highest finish? I think so. I think uh I think um uh, I have to go back and check, but I think it was. Okay. But yeah. Uh, what did you guys did, get out of it? Kids did really well. Um, uh, like I said, I, I mean, I thought to be brutally honest with you, man, we had realistically, we, I think we had five of our kids that were in the mix to potentially podium. I remember feeling at one point and, um, and then Cole dropped a super razor tight blood round match. So we would have had, we were right there on the cusp of, we've had two multiple times now and we've had guys win it. Um, so no, it was, we got a lot of really good takeaways um, from Iron Man. We, we, we took some kids and threw some younger guys in there that maybe a lot of people wouldn't take, but you know, our staff thought that our kids could handle it. And now we're just building off of that, uh, just that tournament and our schedule is good. We got a good schedule. So we got all these little areas during across our schedule where we use them as a, uh, I like our schedule set up because we go individual national level stuff. Then we go to a dual meet event and then, then we get into a stretch where it's individual tournaments that are really highly competitive and it draws different competition from different areas of the state. And then we give our kids, uh, um, you know, a little bit of reprieve right before, you know, the league um, stuff rolls around. And then, of course, you get into sectionals, district, and state. So, yeah, beginning's been good. It's been pretty good. Okay. Uh, do you guys, your son took fourth at the Ironman at 113. Uh, Marcus Blaze, uh, world champion, a pound for pound guy. He was no, pound for pound number one, Every everybody in the nation at that point. He takes a loss in overtime to Davino of St. East St. Charles, right? Missouri yeah. team. Yeah. Um, so and Davino's really good. Davino's really good. Um yeah. what do you think the big takeaways were for your two like top tier super elite guys? Uh well, so I'll start with my son. Um I think Gray, uh the two guys that he lost to are are seniors in high school. They're both committed to Ivy League institutions that um, 
you know, um, Matoika, uh, he got first. Gray lost to him three to two in the quarters. And then uh, Aiden Smith, uh, I think it was five to two. And, uh, you know, Gray did phenomenal with both of them. They're, they're some of the best 13 pounders in the whole country. Um, you know, Gray's a freshman. He's right there. Um, average size 13 pounder. Um, but just, uh, you know, I think he realizes that he can wrestle with anybody, uh, in folk style and, you know, he's just got to just do little things just to keep chipping away and improving and evolving. And, uh, you know, so he's motivated to improve. And then Marcus, you know, I mean, Marcus is, um, one of the greatest competitors I've ever seen, uh, with my own eyes. And, uh, you know, he's highly motivated too. anytime he has a setback in anything, whether it's school, social life, game of cards, dodgeball, running sprints, wrestling matches, wrestling college guys. He uh, gets back to the practice room and he wants to figure things out immediately and, and then test himself. So he's uh, he learned a lot, learned a lot about uh, what's amazing about Marcus is he's really, really good, but he still has so many areas where he can build up on his greatness. And I think he's learning about that. He's learning. He can, he's got to shoot a little more. He's learning that, uh, you know, he can, he's a killer on top. And um, when he starts to really, really understand how to really smother guys, which he kind of does already. I, I mean, he's scary. So his potential is nuts. And same with gray. Um, gray isn't athletically like Marcus, but, his wrestling repertoire and his mind is like him. So it's like, you know, as long as, you know, a great guy just, if great adds a little bit more strength, it keeps improving. I think he's going to be right there uh, in the mix, no matter what time of year it is with anybody. So that's cool. And then our other kids are, are learning a lot too and improving. You know, we're learning about our kids, our coaching staff this year, we're taking a different approach, not worried so much about, other people on teams, but worried about ourselves and, you know, figuring our own kids out. So we're, we're training hard right now. You know, we're in a good thing. Beginning of the year has been good so far. Between you two, right? Like Scotty, you know, you were a guy who wrestled on a cadet world team, coach Whitner. You were a guy that wrestled varsity at Perrysburg, right? Yeah. So it's like different levels of wrestling coaching, but um, I think if it was up to coach Burnett, you might not have buses to get to many of the things. And, or you might mess the schedule up or miss an email or something, right? There's different intelligence levels when we're talking about it. Like Coach Burnett understands he forgot more about wrestling in the last five minutes than I know, right? Um, but, like, you're a logistical guy. You're a guy that makes sure that certain teams are getting in. You got a Kentucky team coming in. Um, you're getting Indiana teams into the tournament. You got these different guys. You got different people that can do different things on the staff, Right. Are, do you have guys who don't even talk to Marcus Blazer on the coaching staff? We're like, I, I don't even know what to say to that guy, right? Like, I don't know if I know what to say to that guy. I don't know what yeah. I, I don't know what I could tell him technically about anything, right? How do you oh. guys communicate? Do all the coaches communicate with Gray? Do all the coaches communicate with Cole Evans, who's a state champ, with Gray Burnett, who's a national champ? You know, and then you've got you got like these tiers of guys. You got a guy that's going to the, the Air Force Academy, right? He's obviously a top-notch kid. He's a state placer for you in Jake Wood. You got all these different levels of guys. Do the coaches communicate with everybody? How does it work? And it seems like your staff has certain guys that they stick with, but do you communicate with everybody? Coach Whitner, are you able to communicate with Marcus Blazer? Or do you let Scotty and Burnett take of that? How does it how does it work with you guys? Yeah, I don't I don't really get a whole lot of <clears throat> I communicate with Marcus on a, on a, on a person to person basis. A lot of pick his brain a lot about certain stuff he's doing. Like I asked him yesterday to notice his little sit out position. He's doing suck back position. I'm like, Hey, can you go over that with Aiden and just kind of <clears throat> show me a little bit. And I, I pick his brain a lot, but um, I'm able, I, I feel like we do a really good job of connecting with our kids as individuals and make relationships with them. And um, you, you know, I, I don't, like you, like you said, Marcus knows more about wrestling than I, I'll forget. Like, like <laughs> he knows more than I'll ever know. But I think in terms of um, I've got a lot to offer him in terms of just being teaching him how to be a, just be a per, good person, be a, and he already is, but just 
I just relate to him a lot with just uh, outside of wrestling. And uh, I got, I'm fortunate to have that same relationship with a lot of the kids on the team where I just feel like I get along with all of them. And we, we all, I feel like we all do. I think there's a, <clears throat> we got a good staff that allows our kids to be themselves, allows them to wrestle in the positions that they're comfortable in. We don't, you know, and Scotty can tell you too, we don't have like this whole, like, this is what Perrysburg does. This is the culture. It's not a, we allow our kids to be individuals and we kind of <clears throat> focus a lot of our instruction to the individual aspect. Coach Burnett. Yeah, no. Hey, was, all I kids line, are... was I out of line with the email and the missing buses? Was am I out of line with that? What happened? Was I out of line saying that maybe buses wouldn't get scheduled if it was up to you? No, I, no, absolutely not. I'm not very um, administratively, uh, yeah, just with it, uh, just my skill set. Um, and one thing I'll credit our staff with is we've all got different strengths and we all understand that, that we're all uh, different. But every kid, there is not a kid on our team that doesn't, that our staff doesn't talk to. Um, now that doesn't say, that's not to say that certain kids get coached a little more by certain guys, like that kind of naturally happens, I think everywhere. Um, and we kind of do that at Perrysburg, but we, I'm a lucky guy because all of our coaches that are, that, that surround me are really good at what they do professionally. Um, so we have a really good tight knit group of men that uh, for the most part, yeah, have uh, come from, great families have loving families you know we we're you know we got guys we're, we're not get, we got guys that aren't getting arrested we got guys that are happily married we got guys that are great fathers engineers teachers uh bank managers investment guys uh you know full-time wrestling coaches mentorship um, our guys, our men in our program, they mentor our kids and they hold our kids to standards outside of wrestling, but it all goes back to wrestling. Cause that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing together. But, um, you know, we kick it together for the most part outside of wrestling. We're all pretty good buddies. Um, yeah, our staff, our, our kids are, they get coached by everybody. And, you know, I don't, you know, I, I make sure that our kids know that if it's either if it's Coach Burnett or Coach Whitner or Coach Coleman or whoever, uh, Coach Coverly or whoever, if they're getting talked or addressed by a coach, they listen. And um, now we're lucky. We're blessed. We got we got a good structure. It's working. You know what I mean? It's working. We're 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 uh, we're mentoring kids. Kids are graduating. Kids have good grade points. Our kids don't get in trouble. You know, we're putting kids at the next level, uh, whether it's Division One, Division Two, whatever, Ivy League, Air Force, you know, we got – it's happening. Um, so – and it's always happened. You know what I mean? Like, when I first got involved, we had guys go to, you know, Army and Ohio University. And, uh, I mean, it's, you know, um, we're just continuing to build the brand and just expectations are to just for our kids to be good human beings when they leave. You know, and I think if they win, they win. You know what I mean? Yeah, I, I'm looking at it. You know, you got a 106 pounder who's been a multiple time All American in Fargo and Aiden Dodd. Um, he's the number one guy at 106 pounds. He won the Braxville. Is it that guy's time? Is that guy going to be able to put together a season this year? Who put him out at the, uh, at the Ironman, Wit, do you remember? Yeah, he lost to uh Montini kid, wrestled forever. I remember just being around wrestling. He's uh, uh, the Montini kid's pretty tough, you know. Um, and then he lost to a dude from uh Father Ryan, Tennessee. Uh, Gray actually wrestled the kid at Super 32, just tough, scrappy kid, and um, yeah. got, wrote, got wrote out the one period and lost 1 0. Dude, they got some guys. 
They had a yeah. guy that wrestled Marcus that pushed Marcus. Father Ryan. They they got some guys. What are they at? Nashville, Tennessee? Yeah. Yeah. Oh man, the Iron Man That's is a- just like unreal. Yeah. No, it's yeah. it's conceptually like it's insane. <laughs> okay. Like, it, I, the, it's the first week. It's like the it's. I mean, yeah, Beast is nuts. Doc Buchanan, whatever. I don't know nothing about that, but like you got your hammer tournaments, and it's like, but dude, the dudes that roll into that gym on that weekend and how they wrestle. I mean, it's it's unreal. And for us, it was our first cop. It was our first competition on the mat. You know what I mean? And it's like. But that's what makes us so damn awesome. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's just great. You know what I mean? Well, your your whole thing's so weird, though, because you've got this crazy, crazy December, like insane December, right? Um, With Iron Man, Brexville, those roughneck duels, whatever the Finley, Frickers, roughneck, Sean Nelson duels. I don't know what you want me to call them. You got those duels, and then you have... You finish with Braxville and then you come right into pit and you got the mommy Bay, but then you've got this super weird league competition. Your league almost hurts you from my perspective. Your league is almost like if you guys could not do the league stuff, if you could go and like pick up some SBC schools, Russell Sandusky Perkins, right? Like Russell Addison, right? Like go Russell, not teams in your league, but you're tied to your league. And I understand that your league, but your league is just, it's, incredibly weak for you guys right the league is really bad how do you guys keep that six week lull from getting you from mommy bay through the league stuff to the sectional and are you doing the d1 will you participate in the state duels or don't you know yet so traditionally we okay so we'll, we'll talk about the league stuff so our league, our league is actually changing. So it's adding some, some new teams. So the league tournament will get a little better, you know, as far as, far as like competition goes, but in years past, our league is, it's a great opportunity for our kids to really fight for each other and fight for the team. And that's what we're striving for at the end of the year. So we utilize our league tournament as a great opportunity to be, to wrestle our, our, our league competition for, you know, sometimes we have, you know, we, we we're able to get creative with our lineup um, and maybe a kid that uh, maybe doesn't normally get to compete gets a crack at being a, a league placer or, you know, in years past, we got kids that weren't starters that have won our league. And, and that's a big deal. They take it with them for a long time. And so they, they're a league champion forever. Um, and for some kids, you know, that's a big deal. Um, and it's awesome for our program. It builds momentum going into a sectional, which then leads into districts and then state. Um, and then in years past, you know, we, we've done state dual stuff. Um, we, we half did them last year. We had committed to doing the regional and then we just had a, like, we had a rash of injuries where we just had four kids that were just banged up four of our better guys and our team wasn't super deep. So, um, you know, I talked to our coaches and, you know, we all came to the conclusion that not participating at the final, whatever was better from top to bottom for our kids to rest them. We got creative with training. Um, it ended up being strategic a little bit, you know what I mean? For us. And it worked out okay. Um, so this year we're we don't, we're not going to do the duels again just because we're just you know our team's different. Um, we're trying to catch dudes up. Um, to be honest, you know it's it, it, the coaches association things. It's a little different when it, than it being OHSAA. It's a different thing. Um, you know, uh, it was that you know. Say that it's like yeah, I'm cool on all that, man. I don't really care about it. Um, not from like that. It's not important. But I think if you have a team that's got great depth, 
that's a great dual meet team. And you know, in the back of your mind, you can really push and strive to win a coaches association state dual meet championship. Cool, man. Knock yourself out. Um, but you know, if you don't feel that way, why do them? You know what I mean? And that's, it's not a knock on the duels. It's just, that's just where we, where we were at. And, you know, we're, that's another thing, another credit to our staff. We're creative, you know, and um, it's easy to be maybe like stubborn and just, we got to do this. We got to do this. We got to do this. But when you can step back and look at things outside the box um, and then you build a plan and you execute it. And if it works, great. And if it doesn't, you learn. So not to say that we won't ever do them, but we're just in a different phase right now with our team. Um, that's just something that we felt as coaches that we're okay just not doing right now. Okay. I got to give Coach Whitner a chance to defend the league that he grew up knowing <laughs> and loving's honor. Was I too harsh on your league or is your week, league as weak as I say it is? Uh, it, yeah, I think it's, I think it's, um, it's getting better. I honestly, it's, uh, so this, you probably know, but the track, the track three rivers or whatever kind of dissolved. Um, so we added Whitmer, Clay, uh, Finley and Fremont Ross. Okay. We lost, we lost mommy. You got a league now. Yeah. You, so, you got a league now. Thank you. Hey, he didn't say those teams. If that's your league now, that's a different story. Yeah. Whitmer, Whitmer's got some guys, man. Yep. Clay's got some guys, man. He's got, he's got to go out. Okay. Yeah. He's by the door. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, we we added those teams in. Um, Will we, they be in the 2024 tournament? Yep, yep. So, and then um, the way they're struck, so they're running it. They did, like, the big school division and, like, and the small schools called like Buckeye and Cardinal. Um, but we're staying with like one league tournament. So it's one individual tournament. So there's one league champion, but like there'll be a big school champion and a small school champion just based on the, the team point. Uh, gotcha. Innings. But, but you'll be in with Clay and Whitmer. So <laughs> yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. So they'll be all there. Um, like we lost mommy, but so I think there's. 12 teams now in the league. So instead okay. of eight. So. Did uh, mommy go into that, uh, that league with Genoa and O'Carver? Yeah. SBC. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Uh, NBC, 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 NBC. Yeah. Northern Buckeye conference. Do not ever <laughs> the NBC for the SBC. Yeah. I will fight you. I want you to know that. You, your O'Carver thing threw me off. Cause Dude, I forgot the O'Carver, O'Carver leaving the SBC is. I want to like, go out and smash all this equipment in my barn right now. I want to just like <laughs> take a sledgehammer to my yeah. windows, all my vehicles. I'm like, what yeah. are you doing? So, uh, so the thing with, with our league though, too, N Napoleon's actually um, done a pretty good job of building a decent, I mean, they got a good team. They're over. better. They're yeah, better. They're, yeah, I, uh, they're, pretty good. They're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. Yeah. Top to bottom. Um, so they're, they're in there. Bowling Green's still in. Uh, Springfield, Northview, Southview. Um, yeah, so. Your original league, I don't think I was tough on it. I don't think, I, I think I was, the criticism was was warranted. Yeah, I think back to when I, but back when I was in, when I graduated, our league tournament was, Maumee had some guys who were pretty good. That was like Carpenter, Leaf Gilsdorf, like that area kids were pretty good at Maumee. Um, Anthony Wayne was pretty good. We were we were we were just kind of getting good. Perrysburg was we won the league when I was a senior, but before that it was kind of like eh. yeah. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was small and it was uh, Springfield was actually really good with Dishong. They were really good back. back yeah, then. they were good. Um, but it, it's just kind of gotten. I think it's wrestling's. I don't know. I don't know if it's just the the way wrestling is right now in terms of high school sports where kids are. I I don't, I don't know. I don't. It's, but it's, a lot of this, like Springfield, is just not what it used to be in terms of wrestling, and um, so that's kind of hurt our league in terms of depth. There's not a lot of depth that there used to be. Okay, so we're gonna have pit tournament, right? Pit fifty one teams. You got a Kentucky team. You got an Indiana team. Um, you couldn't have the Michigan teams, but um, right now you do have you have a prep school, obviously with Western Reserve. 
Delta's there, the usual suspects, right? Wasion, they got a good squad. Yep. Uh, um, Waterson, Bishop Waterson's coming. They're, I mean, they're good. Um, so Waterson's got two or three guys ranked in number one. Um, well, they got Younger, defending champ. And then yeah. they got a couple, I think they're 26 is the number one guy in D2. So they got some guys. And then obviously the future, we know the future that's coming uh, up. That's middle school right now for Watterson. So that's a good addition, right? That's a good one. Who's the other one? Um, I mean, Upper Arlington's coming. Their D1 program has usually got some pretty good guys. Uh, Dublin Jerome, bigger school out of Cleveland, or Columbus coming. Um uh, the reading, I don't, I don't know much about reading, but a lot of these schools, are, Cincinnati area, yeah, a lot of them, a lot of them like reach out. Like I said, they reach out to us and kind of, hey, we want to, we're interested in coming. A, a lot of them are um, like the Kentucky team. Um, their coach, I want to say, is from Fostoria originally. He wrestled in the pit, but he's oh, like wow. a, he's like a Kentucky State trooper, head coach of the program, and, and wanted to come bring his kids up. So wait, is it Sammy Murdoch? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's my god teammate he's from yeah. team. yeah so sammy yeah. that's my guy <laughs> yes sammy dirt 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 mcgee dude <laughs> that's all dirt mcgirt sammy yeah. was a hey, sammy was a two-time state placer for evergreen okay two-time state champ named kyle gleckler and then sammy oh, 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 oh sammy <laughs> oh i love sammy i think he has two kids on the team right I'm not sure. I, I said, I, um, I just know he <clears throat> wrote this uh, real professional email <laughs> to get it in and uh, kind of just researched them a little bit. And dude, I think Sammy is like one of the head guys for the state police in Kentucky. Yeah. Old dirt dog. Yeah. Old dirt McGirt, dude. <clears throat> Murdoch's a good cat. You'll like him. I'll, I'll have to, I'll do an interview with that guy. He's a good dude. Um, how many times have you guys won the pit in a row? This is a Coach Whitner question. Coach oh, Whitner, yeah. how many times have you guys won in a row? <laughs> I don't know in a row. I don't know in a row, but uh, um, <clears throat> we've won. I mean, I, I honestly don't know in a row. But uh, Scotty, have you never? Have you ever not won it? Did the Genoa teams beat you? Yeah, yeah, those teams yeah. Beat you. I think so we've won it a couple times. I think we've won it a couple times in a row. I think the last couple of years, 19, 20, probably 19, 20, 21. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah. And then uh, the COVID year, you guys had a duel and you guys were trying to know, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, dude. And we got the biggest trophy. I'm going to show it to you. It <laughs> is awesome. It's like the most outlandish shit ever, but. From the COVID year? Yeah, it's so big. <laughs> oh, oh. Hey. Like this, winning a soapbox this, derby. It's like when you win, like you know, when they win the Grand Prix and it's like got ribbons and shit on it. It's like, and they're like, ah, they're like spraying the champagne. It's like, it's like huge. It's like outweighing, it's like crazy. Can anybody creep up on you guys? Can Can Watterson pick you off? Can Delta pick you off? Can Wasion pick you off? Can any of these teams pick you off? Can anybody get you guys? Or you just got too much. And you have uh, do you you got doubles in right? You'll uh, you'll have doubles and then you got a yeah, destination. Yeah, we we do extras. Yeah, we, that's another thing. Like our dudes are so smart, man. Like we were like, why don't we do extras? I'm like, yeah, let's do extras. It's great. Um, yeah, I mean, dude, anybody? I, sure, I believe in our kids, right? And I I think we have a really good team. We're gonna be in the mix of being hunt to win, but you know, I mean. You can lose whenever, you know what I mean? So, yeah, our kids have to wrestle really hard and have a really good time and try to score a bunch of points and win the game. And if we win the games, they'll maybe they'll win as a team, right? Is a roar well, coming? Yeah. No. no. Oh, they're they, not. They used to. I got, I was I gonna say the Green keep, Boys are gonna be there. Their roar is there. But uh, yeah. Highlands there. Highlands there. So Highlands the, there. Highlands. Really? The Highlands. Yeah. So they wow. they started coming a couple years ago, and they got a solid team, top to bottom too. So, um, yeah, yeah. Aurora, Aurora came a couple years ago, and then uh, I give Jeremy Johnson crap all the time. He pulled his team out, and they don't come. So, yeah. so yeah. we see. A Blaze Contos matchup. Um, no, I don't, I don't know. 
I mean, maybe I don't know what weight. I don't know what weight he's wrestling. I think he's thirty-two. So we probably probably gonna say it. Yeah, yeah, I, but I don't know. I haven't seen. Um, I assume he's at thirty-two. I hope that Coach Contos throws him into the open draw, and it's like QWW, and we get to see it first round. <laughs> the open draw. Open draw. <laughs> hey man, hey the God, dude, Contos is tough. He he can wrestle absolutely. Oh, Super man. good. Super good. Really good. Super good at wrestling, coming into his own. Dig the yeah. kid. I dig him. He's tough. But if it's, if it's not him and we see Contos at 126, he can match up with Evans, right? That's a potential. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or yeah. if the younger dude goes 157, we can see him wrestle Lance Overmeyer, right? From Clyde. Or Jake Wood. Or Jake Wood. Oh, hey. Oh. Hold on there, boy. Slow yourself down a little bit. <laughs> All right. Last thing. Well, last thing we can have a little more. But fun. Yes, that could happen too. Yes. Okay. Last thing for me, and then we can we can break it down a little bit. Does the dual <laughs> meet with, with Dundee come down to 175, 190, and 285? And who has the advantage if it does? Oh. Um so uh, yeah, I think. They didn't enter anybody above 175 at the tournament at Brexville. So I don't I don't know how strong they are there. I mean, that's kind of where a lot of our inexperience is too. One or two fifteen, two eighty. Well, I mean, those guys have been wrestling now. It's, but um our our two eighty five is getting better every week. So I think it could come down to some of those uh some of those toss up weights that we talked about in the beginning though, like twenty six, uh twenty. Scoring bonus points, but I, th I think I think we got a little bit of an advantage at the upper weights just based on looking at some of their results from the year. But you never know. <laughs> you know, they're good, man. They're tough. So, so we could have eleven really greatly contested matches, and it could come down to seventy-five, ninety. It could come down to wait. Who do they have? Who you got? Is Saito at seventy-five for you? Who's at seventy-five? No. <laughs> Shane's 65. Caden Nichols is 75. And then who's 75 for them, Wit? Oh, man. Um, God, I, I'd have to look at the thing. It's, uh, it's Stone's brother, the Redmond kid. I don't know his first name, though, but he's pretty okay. tough. So he's pretty tough. Yeah. yeah. And then probably have the advantage at 75. I think they're, yeah. I think they're both. Yeah, I don't, think, yeah, I don't know. We'd have to see them. Yeah. So it's gonna come down. To, it's gonna come down to those final three weights, probably. Yeah. Yeah. So if we have a if we have a six five duel, they're beating you six to five, going into ninety two fifteen heavyweight. You guys feel pretty good about your chances. Oh, uh, yeah, I mean, just talking about it, yeah. But you never know. Never know. You never know. Yeah, I mean, the example was I thought we were gonna beat. The dudes from Detroit, roughneck duels, and we didn't. You know what, what I mean? Do you, what do you do differently? Is there anything you do differently? What do you learn from that loss to DCC that you take to this? No, game? I mean we we did everything we did was good, um, as far as what what we did, but just you know, just had little things happen that we just didn't expect, and we lost. Uh, we didn't score bonus when we should have scored bonus. They scored bonus when they thought they could score bonus. And then we lost uh, uh might have been well, a toss up for sure. But we won yeah, heavyweight was real close. You know, it whatever. I'm just saying, like in my mind, I thought we were gonna win that duel and yeah, and we didn't. So gotcha. But they're good too. I mean, sorry yeah. knock on that. You guys you guys did outplace them at Brexville, didn't you? Yeah. And you you did outplace uh, Dundee as well, right? Yes. Which means nothing in a duel. <laughs> Hell no, no. It means nothing in a duel. No. no. <laughs> Absolutely I love it. nothing. You guys got any good stuff for me? Anything to 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 get me up on uh, speed here? For we, I you know six o'clock Wednesday. Uh, what do we call your gym? Is your gym the Hive? I don't know. I don't know. I think they just call it the arena. The arena. <laughs> the honeycomb. <laughs> so Perrysburg, 6 p.m. live on Go Hiocast. 
YouTube, yeah. free, you guys, Sunday, number 43 versus number 23. And what could be a 7-7 seven, seven toss up, I'm hoping for. I know you guys aren't. I know It'll you're really fun. For a good buddy or something like that. You guys got any interesting Could stories really for me? Man, no. <laughs> I, I I wish. <laughs> I got a picture sent to me from somebody from Brexville of you sleeping on the gym floor. <laughs> Man, I was passed out. <laughs> I was passed out. You were done, skis. Well, I had, I was, yeah, I was tired. I don't know what was wrong. I was passed out. You were just tired. Got yeah. It. Did a little workout and then just had my tunes on and my radio and put my hands in my sweatpants and laid on the mat. <laughs> <laughs> um, Whitner, any uh, new debt or, Another kid advice, another another baby advice. Any advice for us? No, no, I mean it's uh learning how to be a girl dad. It's been fun, man. It's uh it's uh like just nothing it's nothing really exciting, just, just a lot different. Raising a girl has been a lot different. Um just a lot, lot more to wipe down there, you know what I mean? Like boys are easy, dude. Wipe the wipe it and get done, but it's yeah, a lot, lot, lot more a lot more going on. Care, I guess we would say. I don't know. I, I don't really know what to say to that. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah. Because no, I'm just like you guys. I'm not a girl dad. I don't ever. I've never had to change a uh, girl's diaper. So. Yeah. Got two dudes and uh, quit while I was ahead. Yeah, you. Yeah, smart guy. <laughs> <laughs> Scotty, girl dad, there, huh? You like being a girl dad? Oh, uh, when she likes being a daughter whatever yeah when she's nice to me <laughs> no i love my daughter lena's yeah. great lena's great but you know it's just like what was saying it's when you're you know relating to your daughter can be tough if she's you know like just with girl stuff but i try to tell her i love her every day and tell her that i'm proud of her and if she wants help with stuff i'll be there but you know i'm yeah i'm just a i'm a goon i'm a Knuckle dragon, Neanderthal, Crow Magnum Brow yes. guy. So it's like, you know. But I I hope she knows that I'm proud of her. Yeah, I dig my daughter. She's great. Um, I think I know the answer for you, Scotty. I don't think Lena's gonna wrestle. <clears throat> what about you, Wit? No. Your daughter wrestle? Uh I don't I don't think so. I'm I mean I'm not I'm not like anti girls wrestling. It's just uh just my wife, I, we're just not into it for rather do something else, but uh, like I, I just not into it. But <laughs> do all your boys wrestle? Yeah, they do. Yeah, they all do. So, my older two, it's I got a really <laughs> unique dynamic. It's a uh, I got my older two are step step kids, so um, they're they're trying to figure out wrestling, and the oldest one's freshman in high school, um, kind of really Im immerse himself in wrestling hard for the first time i think he's figuring out a lot about himself um and then landon's 10 um doing the oac district sunday he's been wrestling you know for a long time and then uh kale just turned six and he's doing he'll do the district sunday he's done a couple of tournaments uh this year he's been having fun so he's just i think by nature, it's like the oldest one makes the middle one tougher. The middle one makes the youngest one tough. It's just kind of he's feisty. He likes to wrestle. He likes to fight. So um, just throwing him in there, kind of see how he does. But he's having a good time. Love it. Love to hear it. Scotty, you got anything else for me? Man, no, man. I'm just looking forward to seeing you. Yeah. Seeing you come and hang out. So we'll we'll uh, we'll get together. I just grateful. Thanks for putting us on, giving us some time. Cool. Coaches, thank you for the time. Good luck to you guys moving forward. Um, sun uh, uh Thursday, 6 p.m. live on Go Ohio Cast. If you can make it to Northwest Ohio and Perrysburg, just off I-75 and I-23, do it. But if not, live on Go Ohio Cast, top 50 matchup, number 43 Dundee versus number 23. Perrysburg, guys, stick around afterwards and I'll talk to you.